um, that sometimes we give second chances and it comes back to bite us. So the first guy, we're calling him Passive Paul. And he's the guy who maybe he hangs out in text or email and doesn't, doesn't ask you out. Um, maybe he goes on a first meet date with you and he never asks you out on the second date. And you're thinking, oh, maybe I didn't let him know. Maybe I need to ask him out. Maybe I have to give him more hints and clues. Um, it probably means that he's not that into you. And he, or, you know, a guy who says he doesn't want a relationship, um, believe him the first time. I, I had a client who, this was actually before I became a dating coach. It wasn't a client, it was a friend. And she had met a guy and she was crazy about him. So hot, so, you know, so attractive, so narcissistic. And, um, and he said, you know, I'm really... I'm not available for a relationship. And she asked me, what do you think he meant by that? And I said, he meant that he was not available for a relationship. And so I wasn't a dating coach yet, but it was like, I'm looking at this from the outside and thinking, why isn't she seeing this? Why is she interpreting? So, you know, this is passive Paul. We need to walk away from passive Paul. And we have a, a question here from Real Laura Barry, do we really not see them or do we ignore them thinking it was a one-off? Um, good question. And I think a lot of times we do see them. I, I think it happens that we do see them and we ignore them because we make other things more important. And mm -hmm. what I see is women tend to focus on all the positives and they ignore the negatives. And the negatives are so important because all the positives mean nothing with the negatives. Right. I have a really good example of that <clears throat> with, a, with one of the women that was coaching. She was on like a third date with a second date with a man who she was really attracted to, really liked. And he made a pass at her, like a really, really went for it. Um, and she kind of, you know, your reaction is, I'm not ready. And he kind of threw a fit. Um, he was a really immature response. Um, and she passed it off as a one-off, right? Just like Laura was saying, as a one-off. But two months later, what actually brought them up was how immature he was. So it should have been a flag, like something she should have really been looking for consistently, um, but she kind of pushed it aside. So he showed who he was. Um, he handled kind of a challenging situation um, in a very immature way, and that's who Right. So he showed himself and she he showed himself. Yes. Yeah. And um, about passive ball, um, I talked to someone this morning who's in a really great relationship. And for the first time in her life, she's 48. First time she's met a really good man who adores her and um, tries to make them happy. And he's hot, the whole, the whole package. And what she said to me is, you know, I never have to wonder. I never have to wonder if he, through the whole thing, never had to wonder if he was into me, never had to worry if he liked me. He always showed up and told me. So for those of us staying over 40, that's the great thing, is that the men, if they're grown up, they don't play games. They, they show up, they step up, they act like and so the passive guys that will take action, um, they're probably either not that into you or their life just, you know, where they are in their life, just it isn't something they're really serious about right now. Mm -hmm. So pay attention to that. If he's not paying attention and he's not trying to see you, it's like Sandy said, it's probably not that into you. Right. And something else that you've said before, Bobby, and I think is really important for women to know is how do you feel when you're with him and how do you feel when you're not with him? And I think often women feel great when they're with a guy and when they're not with him, they're full of anxiety. I'm not sure if he likes me. Why isn't he calling me? It's been 24 hours. Oh my God. Um, the guy who likes you shows you that he likes you and, and you feel good when you're with him, when you're not with him. So I think that's really key. I, I, I can't tell you how many relationships I was in where I felt great with the guy and never great when I wasn't with him. 
So mm -hmm. just wanted to bring that one out because that's also a sign of emotional maturity and a guy who follows through his actions and his words match, all those things that make a person relationship ready. Absolutely. So Sandy, um, go ahead and give another like three minutes. I'm going to try to fix this. Oh, okay. Okay. So, okay. So talking. Um, and like, if you want to do the next one and switch, that's cool too, whatever you want. Okay. While well, you're fixing. Okay. So I'm going to go to guy number two. And this is ex bashing Ed, we're calling him. He's the guy who talks about his ex and you interrupt him. Say you're on your first meet date and all he can do is talk about his ex. This happens on the phone too, by the way. Um, yeah. Oh my, oh my, Via Laura Barry. Um, this is so common at the date. And you interrupt him because as women, of value, we interrupt, we're allowed to interrupt and just say, hey, um, I'd like to talk about who you are today and let's not talk about the past. And if he still won't stop, then you walk away from the guy because he's stuck, he's a victim. Um, victims are not fun to date. <laughs> I, I'm sure that you've met a few of them. They drain you. Um, guy who's stuck in blame and shame is not the right guy for you. And um, and have you guys ever dated this guy? I'm getting a lot of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that, I love it. <laughs> this seems uh -huh. to be uh, something common. Um, yes, you hit a nerve. Yes, um, so yeah, I think that I, I remember, and this was when I didn't have the ability to um, moderate a conversation. I would get on the phone with a new guy that I met online and he'd start talking about his ex. And I would feel horrible inside, but I would feel like it was rude to interrupt him. And so I wouldn't. And I'd listen to him for like an hour, talk about how his ex took all his money and how he's now poor and he can't, and he's so angry at her. And I'd be feeling like, oh, I can't stand talking to this guy. And now I know I interrupt that you can interrupt and it's and you don't gain anything, you don't get, points for, for staying on the phone for a long time or going on a date and staying in conversation with the guy who just won't stop talking about all of his problems and blaming it on somebody else. Right. Especially the ex. Yes. And yeah. as, as real Laura Barry says, he's, you're not his therapist. And that is so true. Yes. We often feel like we want to fix. We want to help. You know, we don't want to be rude. Yeah. We, we don't want to be rude. And so we get stuck in those conversations and, and, and then you set up a dynamic that you are his mommy, his therapist, all the things you don't want to be. Yeah. <laughs> so that's ex yeah. Ed. And let's talk about how to interrupt. Okay, good. Right? So, um, and it's really important to do because you're, you're not going to go out with him again, right? Because, if he doesn't stop, you're not going to go out with him again. And if he wants to go out with you again, it's strictly because he wants someone to sit and listen to him. So how you interrupt is first you try just casually to interject into the you know, conversation. Um, uh, but if he doesn't what I call pass the conversation ball um, or he doesn't stop, um, then what you do is you just say, excuse me, Bob. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you know, I know we're here to get to know one another. And I've been trying to tell you some things about myself, and I'm feeling like um, you're not really interested in getting to know me. Are there things you want to know about me? And that's it. Just <laughs> zip it. <laughs> zip it. Give him give him time to process that because it could be you know taken as a as criticism, but I have literally heard from clients, and I'm married, I'm not doing this anymore, but I've heard from many clients that men will actually stop and thank them. I actually had somebody last week where that happened, and he even wrote a follow-up email to her and said, I just want to let you know how much I appreciate that you did that because it turned out to be great. We had a conversation, and it's turned out really positive. She's gone out with another couple of times. 
he still talks a lot, but not about <laughs> this kind of, you know, yeah. the X. And, um, so, and then if he won't, if he really doesn't give it up and keep talking, then, you know, you learn something about him that's important and you learn not to go out with him. It's just not for you. Right. And some men do talk a lot because they're nervous, you know, and, and so like the guy that you're talking about, he does like to talk a lot, but he wasn't a bad guy. And I think that um, we often immediately interpret a person who talks about himself a lot as selfish, narcissistic, and that's not necessarily true. That's so right. I, love, I love your interruption style because it's kind and it focuses on the present, which is really what you want on a date. You want to get to know the person, who they are, and you want it to be uh, back and forth. And not everybody is great at first date conversation. Not everybody has a dating coach like us. So yes. <laughs> um, right. and people get nervous. So yeah. So I think that we, you know, when you see that you have interrupted and he still doesn't stop, and I had that happen to me a while back. I had a guy. He talked about himself and talked about himself, and then he said, "Oh my God, I'm talking about myself so much. Let me <laughs> let me find out about you. What do you do for a living?" And I said, "I'm a life coach." And he said, "Really? I'm a life coach too." And <laughs> and guess what? He wasn't a life coach. He considered himself a life coach. He was like a real estate agent or something. And and it was just it, it all always went back to him. That was mm -hmm. the nature of the conversation. And so I'd redirect and then it would go back to him. And then he'd try to impress me with things that were not impressive. And it was all about status and, um, you know, getting me to like him based on his wealth and his status. Mm -hmm. And um, so, it, you know, he didn't get a second date, but I did try to redirect. It was actually wow. funny, to, you know, going on yeah. like um, Yeah. And something else about sort of this, you know, blabbing <laughs> um, and talking just, you know, endlessly. A lot of times it's really important, I think, to um, you know, understand men as much as possible. And the reality is that men don't socialize like we do, right? So when they, when we have a situation where um, maybe he hasn't dated for a while, um, you know, when we're single, we talk all the time, right? <laughs> you can hear me, right, Sandy? I can hear you. Yeah, yeah good. Um, <laughs> the echo's gone. When we're single, um, we call our friends, we talk to our friends, we go out to dinner, you know, we go shopping, we, we volunteer together, whatever we do things. Men don't socialize like we do. So they don't get the chance to really, to really share who they are and to socialize um, and talk. And so when they're on a date and they're in your feminine energy and they have a lovely woman sitting in front of them who is, you know, seems open and she's smiling, it's a real invitation for him. And sometimes they really just get swept up in the opportunity to, you know, open up and share about themselves because they don't, you, they don't do it with the dudes. You don't see guys going out to dinner together, just chatting. Right? right or going shopping together just chatting so have have that empathy and remember their point of view um that they just may really want someone to talk to but that doesn't mean you should let them talk the whole time right but that may be why he's talking so much right. that's a really good point and understanding how men communicate differently than women is a big part of dating and it's a much bigger conversation it's maybe the next blab that we do yeah. um but I, I think that it's so true what you're saying. And I think that also when, when we share from our emotional life, it opens up the space for him to share mm -hmm. um, more about his emotional life, more about his passions. And so we have so much control over how the date goes. And I think women often think they don't. Um, and so, you know, both of us come from that philosophy that women can be empowered to really direct a lot of the conversation. So you don't have to tolerate terrible dates. What I used to call the the bobblehead date, where the guy is talking and you're bobbleheading the whole time. <laughs> yeah. um, you don't have to be that bobblehead. You can actually take control and redirect. And bobbleheading. Yes. Yeah. And and uh, you'll be doing him a favor. 
Yes. That's a really important thing to remember. You'll be doing him a favor. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Good, good guy will say thank you and stop. Right. The, the, the selfish guy will continue. And that's mm-hmm. how you know if it's a red flag. That's right. Um, I want to invite you all um, who are here and with us and listening. Um, we, If you have a question, um, please do what Laura did and, and ask us. Um, it's, it's really, really helpful. And as you see, there's an open seat. So if you're at your computer with your camera um, and you have a question for us um, having to do with these red flags, please um, pop in. Just so click that have, open seat, right, Sandy? Have somebody here in the open seat, actually. So I'm going to invite oh, her. Oh, okay. Her name is Awesome. Em. We have guests. Let's see. I love it. Here. Uh, I invited her in and I don't see her. Hey, you have 42 loves and I only have three. Oh, somebody give some love to Bobby. Feel- <laughs> oh, she's getting them. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> we're so competitive here. doesn't we're just <laughs> all right just Give just saying time. um okay i don't see her can you hear her nope so i'm gonna exit out okay mm, um, bummer go ahead and type it go ahead and send message and angeli what a pretty name yeah okay you want to go on to the next red flag we still have an open seat. Um, yeah, why don't you do the next? Oh. Okay. So um, the next red flag is the guy we call Selfish Sam. Um, and I think probably most of you have met this guy. So this is a guy that it's all about him. Um, and sometimes it's kind of subtle that it's all about him. Um, it's not the guy that yaps, yaps, yaps. It's the guy that... Um, the plans are, um, he makes the plans and you think it's great because you want a guy to do that and step up and be the dude. Um, but then you start noticing that he never asks you what you want to do. Or you start noticing that the time um, is always um, what works for him. Um, maybe eventually you start meeting his friends, but he's not interested in yours. The decisions are his. He needs to be right Um, maybe early on, he's the guy that won't drive to you, right? So, um, you're an hour away and he just, you know, he won't do it. Um, there's all kinds of ways that men show up when it's all about them. And some of you may, you know, have called it like the narcissist. We've all, you know, most of us have experienced the man where it really is like everything's about them and everything reflects back on him. And maybe he's just, he wants you to make himself look good. But this is a really common, common thing that happens in relationships. And sometimes it's, you know, a year, sorry about that, a year or 20 years later when the woman, (laughs) that's my husband, (laughs) that's Larry. Um, Good song for him, don't you think? (laughs) So sometimes, sorry about that, I forgot to turn my phone off. Um, So this guy sometimes is hard to, (laughs) live so this guy sometimes it's hard to detect i apologize for that um because sometimes it just seems like he's doing a lot for you but make sure you know it's about you and not him really look at whether he's reaching out to you to find out what makes you happy or he's taking you out and and entertaining you based on what he wants to do and what's important to him that's a really big red flag um, at Sandy, you want to, I can see you. Yeah. It's a really good red flag. And sometimes they're really, these are like, can be the really shiny guys. These could be the really kind of, um, charismatic, really interesting, really fun guys. You know, the ones that we really want, um, who are good daters, who are used to, you know, knowing how to give the appearance of making you happy. Um, and you could be blinded by this. So, so really It's really about when you're dating, it's really about you. Are you happy? Are you feeling like he's trying to make you happy? Um, And keeping your eye, staying sort of focused inside, not looking at him, what's he doing, what's he doing? But always looking at yourself and how am I feeling? Am I feeling like he's trying to make me happy? Um, Am I feeling safe? Am I feeling understood? Am I feeling heard? I love that. 
I think that I spent most of my life thinking, what does a guy need and how can I make him happy? And I see that with my clients. Um, and I'm working with somebody right now who got stuck in a relationship like that, where she was always accommodating him, his schedule, driving to him because he had a full life and she was more flexible. And what she did was she created a dynamic where it was always on his terms and, and she never ever spoke up. So this all happened before she started working with me or how to, if she wants to rekindle this relationship, it's got to be very, very different. Um, and it's hard to do after a relationship has already been established. That's right. Um, because you have established who you are based on what you've allowed him to do. So, you know, again, you have control here about your own boundaries, knowing yourself and what you need. And, um, and Laura says, yes, because you are changing the ground rules. Absolutely. So when you change the ground rules, you see how somebody responds to them. Right. And when they respond well, and they're willing to please you, and they want to please you, then that's going to be the guy who doesn't have the red flag. He's going to be the good guy. Um, so sometimes it's our own fault, you know, and I see I see women who stay in long marriages that the dynamic is like that. And I would say probably my marriage had a lot of that, too. Um, I wanted to keep the peace. And so I kept compromising on what I needed. So, you know, a good guy is a team player. He wants to be part of a team. He doesn't want it to just be the me show. And um, I think that that's something that we need to really remember that we have we have rights as people to expect that from everyone in our lives. You know, don't don't settle for friends who are all about them either, but you know, mm -hmm. all about themselves and never make compromises for you. So, you know, some of you live in places that are far away from big, you know, maybe not in a big town and maybe it's an hour drive, um, maybe even further. Some people write in to me and tell me that they live in really remote towns and nobody wants to ever travel to them. Right. And I think that, you know, I do know several, several, several fabulous marriages that began, you know, so long distance. Um, one of my good friends was divorced and met a guy who lived in New York where she was living in LA, came out to see her. This is actually such a cool story because um, he was set up with her and she didn't really think that it was, it had much potential. And he, so she, they went on the one date and, and the person who set them up said, Hey, you know, he's here. Even if you don't want to go on another date, why don't you hang out with him tomorrow? He wants mm -hmm. to take you to Disneyland. So she goes, okay. So she didn't really have any expectations. They had a fabulous time and they ended up getting married. Um, and I think sometimes, you know, when you give the good guy a chance, um, so this is also important to not write people off, the ones who don't have the red flags, to give them a second chance um, and see what they're like when they're more relaxed, um, when they're more comfortable. Sometimes sense of humor comes out when you're more relaxed. I think, you know, I know for me, I'm not always funny on a first date. Um, you know, I have to get get to know somebody well, but um, I'm getting off on a sidetrack. <laughs> I forgot what we were talking. Oh, That's yeah. That's okay. Well, yeah. I think living living far away. So I just want to say, just to finish that and close it, um, I live about an hour outside of Manhattan, and when a man starts a conversation with, "Do you ever come to the city?" It really irks me. Um, you know, saying, I really want to meet you. And how far away are you? Oh, I'll drive there. You know, I'll drive to meet you there the first time. That always gets extra points for me. Sure. So. And it. I think what you're talking about, which is really important, is that it's your responsibility to, I think it's your responsibility, or I'd like to see you take responsibility to try to bring out the best in the men you meet. And so um, when you do that, and I'm not saying that it's your responsibility to make every man happy, very different. What I'm saying is if you're dating and you're looking for a forever relationship, then being um, 
being willing to do things like interrupt and say, hey, do you want to know a little bit about me? You know, I'd really like to know about you, but do you want to know a little bit, bit about me? Or saying something like, you know, um, I really I really enjoy going out with you. Um, there's something I'd really like to do. Are you willing to do that? Mm -hmm. Right. Really sort of show up and using communication, try to see if there's another side, if there's right. So if there's another side of this man and giving him the opportunity. And I love your suggestion, Sandy, about doing something different. So if you're with somebody and he seems boring, um, we, cause boring men are, yeah, we don't want those guys. Um, no. but if you're with somebody that seems boring, if you're always going out to dinner and just sitting across from each other at the dinner table, then it's, you know, then instead of saying, okay, that's it. Um, I'm not going to see him anymore. If he's got some potential, then what you want to do is you want to ask him what he really likes to do. Maybe he loves to, maybe miniature golf is fun for him, or maybe he likes bowling, or maybe he likes a particular type of films or on the next date, do something that he enjoys doing and watch him in, in that kind of environment mm. and see if, like you said, you see another side of him. So instead of just leave, instead of just blowing him off or instead of just saying, no, 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 um, try do things that, um, that show him who you are and that help bring out who he is. And I think you're going to have a lot more fun and you're going to make more real connections. And eventually that's how you're going to be with the right, how you're going to attract the right man. Yeah. Men need help. We're better at this than they, than they are. Our brains yeah. work that way. Totally agree with you. One of my favorite first dates was going to a museum. And um, there was a Curious George exhibit at the museum. So it really showed me who he was. His, his inner child came out and I got mm -hmm. to know who he was as a child. I got to know a lot of his history because we, we looked at exhibits and, um, and he talked to me about his history and his traditions. So it, and you also, you're standing side by side and not facing each other. Yeah. That's side by side. With noise. Yeah, and with noise and caffeine. The side by side is much less um, much less intimidating, um, and it and conversation can really become much more fluid. So, <clears throat> so doing things that he likes, um, I think he suggested that one. I'm not sure, but it was it was fun, and it was a great way to get to know a person. Yeah, um, one of my favorite dates, by the way, was a library, and one and really my least. I mean, I dated for 30 years, ladies. I, I got married at 48. I was the first time bride at 48. Um, my hate my worst date of my life was at Disneyland <laughs> that you just mentioned. Oh, so um, I wanted to, okay, so we're talking about uh, selfish Sam, right? And I wanted to bring up one more thing, and this kind of has relates to the first guy we talked about, like that passive Paul kind of guy. So um, the guy that it's all about him um, often also turns out to be the guy that seems kind of passive. And you're finding that you're making the arrangements. You're finding that you're texting him. You're calling him saying, I have tickets to something. Do you want to see it? So really keep an eye out for that. Is he making the moves? But there's a guy that I call the pinger. Okay. So uh, some of you know what pinging is. Pinging in technology. Um, pinging is when one computer needs to talk to another computer at a future date it will ping to make sure the connection is there. So when it's ready, they can make the connection. So the pinger guy is the guy that texts, that like calls you once in a while, texts you, but he never goes out with you. He never, he never makes a plan to go on a real date, but he keeps in touch with you. He keeps pinging you. And maybe once in a while, at the last minute, you'll get the, hey, you want to have a drink tonight kind of thing. Um, but you're never going to get the, what are you doing next Friday? You know, let's go out to dinner. And what this guy is doing, it's this combination of being passive and selfish. What he's doing is he's basically keeping you on a string, like keeping you interested. Because when he, when he texts or he calls, he always talks about how great you are and he'd really like to see you. And, um, and yeah, he keeps you on hold. Um, that's right, Robin. So be aware of the pinger. And again, if you're thinking, if you're focusing on you and what he, how you're feeling with him, 
you're going to realize really early on that the pinger is just not doing it for you. That yeah. he's not making you feel safe. He's not make, making you feel, you know, valuable. Um, and just dump him. Really, just get him out of your life because he's. I I know women, and I had the same thing. That will hang on for years. Will hang your, on for years to this guy. Right. Hoping so. That huge that, uh, red flag. If he's not asking you out, then go move on. Yeah. Yeah. And you can tell him, by the way, you can say, you know what, I'm really, you know, it's really great that I get your texts or your phone calls, but, you know, I'm dating because I really want to meet someone, you know, that I can have a relationship with. And if you want to go out, you know, on a date, please call me and ask me. Otherwise, um, have a good life. Yeah. And guys actually like direct communication. Yes. We don't like the runaround. So be direct, you know, and it's hard for us. We're not taught to be direct. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to say also, like, if a guy does go out of his way to meet you, tell him thank you. You know, tell him you love when he comes to meet you, that it mm -hmm. really is attractive to you when a man comes to meet you. You know, just set him up to win. If he is going out of his way, you need to let him know. Um, so it works both ways. Here, I'll give you some love on that one. <laughs> um, yeah, it definitely helps to uh, to uh, give him. And, you know, I know some women is like, why do I have to do all this for him? Right. This all assumes that it's a guy that's being nice to you and, and you know, showing interest in you and um, who's a good guy. Yeah. yeah. All right. guy who schleps to see Sandy from the city is a good that's guy. Right. He's a good guy. He's Actually, good guy. he was going to schlep two and a half hours to see me. And that's right. That's a really good guy. Yeah. And I did that. I was the same thing. I, you know, I lived in, I live in Los Angeles area. So any with traffic, it's like the city anywhere is, is a major schlep. Yeah. Okay. So that was Selfish Sam. You want to go on to uh, Boorish Bob? Yep. Let's talk about Boorish Bob. Boorish Bob. He is the guy who has bad manners. Um, you've probably met a few of these guys. Uh, he's the guy who's rude to the wait staff. Um, he comes late to the date and doesn't apologize. Um, he makes you split the cost of a bowl of soup um, or a cup of coffee. I've actually had you know clients who were asked to split the coffee fee. Um, uh, wow. Yeah. So these guys who who just they they're not they have no manners. Um, and, you know, you, you're not training guys to have manners at this age. <laughs> Either he's got them or he doesn't. And um, I, I had a date um, with a guy who came late. He was, uh, he was a doctor, big, big doctor, head of a department in the hospital. Shows up about 20 minutes late, no text. I usually will leave, actually, if the guy's that late. Um, and then he, no apology. Then he said... It was six o'clock, so it was like dinner time, and we were supposed to meet for a drink. He said, are you hungry? And the waiter came and gave us menus, and I said, yes, actually, I'm starving. And he said, oh, well, I'm not hungry. I had a big lunch, and he gave the <laughs> menus back to the waiter. Oh, and um, so he was rude to me. Uh, there were so many things that he did on that date. And so, yeah, it, it ended after about a half hour. He was also on call and um, he kept, got paged in the middle. I mean, it was just, it was not good. Yeah. So you don't want to date a guy who's going to show up late, who's going to be rude to the waiter, who's going to be rude to you. Enough said, Boris Bob, unless you have something else to add, Bobby. Uh, well, I also, you know, this is also the guy that um, doesn't talk positively about other people, uh, right? So he may be, he may even be nice to you. But obviously we want to look at how he, how he is in the world and how he interacts with, with the people around him. Um, so uh, this is the guy that may um, sort, of, sort of go on and on about uh, what's you know, in politics, like what's wrong with politics. I have a client right now, <laughs> I have an amazing woman that um, is coaching with me right now. And um, she is an engineer and she, works in, she does all kinds of traffic work, right? Um, she built, she engineers roads and bridges and all this amazing stuff. And the city in which she lives, I guess the traffic's a hassle. So the guy that she's dating goes on and on about how bad the traffic is. 
and doesn't realize that she takes it personally because that's her career uh -huh. um, that she really values. So he's, he's kind of the guy that doesn't, yeah, he doesn't really pay attention to other people's feelings. Um, and ultimately it's all about him. I think all of these are ultimately, it's all yeah. about them, right? Right. But it's a red flag. So even though he's, even though he may be a certain way to you, you, you do have to pay attention to how he is to other people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah a guy can, you know, really pour it on thick to you and then turn around and be an, a real ass to the waiter. That's a mm -hmm. big red flag. Yeah. Um, and, and in fact, um, that's a suggestion that I have for first dates. Um, go somewhere where you get service. So instead of going to Starbucks or going to a coffee shop or something like that, um, first of all, they're always really noisy and there's so much going on. So instead of doing that, the, really go to a place like a lounge in a restaurant um, where you can get coffee. You don't have to get a drink um, or like the bar area of a, of a restaurant. Go somewhere where you can get service and um, where there's not just craziness going on around you. So you really can focus on, you know, and talking with one another and see how he does interact with other people. Yeah, I love that. I love that because you, you find out a lot more than if you yeah. just went out to Starbucks. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Let's go. So, Guy. Am I Vinny? Uh, Next yeah. one, mine. Vinny. Vinny. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So flag number red flag number five. So the red flag number five <laughs> sounds is like the guy, <laughs> is the guy Vinny the victim, right? The guy who um, who nothing is ever right for him, nothing is ever his fault. Um, he blames others for his problems. And where this shows up a lot, especially when you're first dating, is talking about the ex. So um, first, first and foremost, I would avoid the ex conversation at the beginning, period. So just like we talked about at the beginning of um, the call today, um, if he's going on and on about the ex, then you want to like cut it off. But if you hear him blaming her, Red flag, run for the hills, right? That is a run for the hills moment yeah. because, and if you're gonna talk about the ex, then what I, what I want you to do is talk in terms of what did you learn, right? So if you're talking about the ex kind of stuff, um, and just stop them and say, you know what would be really interesting? Um, what did you learn from that relationship? Okay, and that, if he- They often up, like they're, they, they're like a deer in the headlights when yeah, I- Yeah, like, <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> the good the good guys, the smart guys, the ones that I know you all want, um, they've been through that. They've been through it and they know what they've learned because you want somebody that's learned from their past. Um, and if you get the, what I learned is she's a bitch. Oh, I hate that word. Or, um, you know, something like that. Or I learned not to pick someone like her. You really have to look for that blaming stuff because you all want grownups, right? You all want a grown-up man. You want a guy who's like sturdy and who will stand by you and who will take care of the challenges in life. And, you know, you're going to live your life with him. And so you need somebody who's going to take responsibility. And it's a really um, important thing to look for early on. And it shows up. It shows up in how he talks about his ex, how he talks about his children, how he talks about his career or his job. Um, and does he take responsibility and does he face challenges head on? That's the grown up stuff. So important. Um, okay, we got that. Uh, Laura says, I dated someone who seemed nice until I asked if he had a good relationship with his ex, meaning his daughter's mom. And he said, which ex? Bottom line, married four times. Now that's a red flag. Um, and how he talks about his mother. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. His mother. So, can I, can I say something about the being married yes. times? Um, yes. <laughs> so I, um, I used to think that was a big red flag that guy couldn't stay married and, and, you know, he, he just keeps getting divorced and, and you can look at that from another perspective. So number one, it matters. What did he learn? You know, just like what Bobby just said, what did he learn from each marriage? Um, is he learning or is he dating the same woman over and over again and wondering why he keeps getting divorced? Um, the other thing is, like, some people really learn, and the, and and they do better the next time. So um, the other thing is, 
that if he is marrying over and over, it means he likes to be married. And that's also a good thing. It can be a very good thing because a lot of men are afraid to be married. So you have to assess the situation, but I wouldn't write him off because he's been multiply married. Um, and I had a woman on my radio show, Last First Date Radio, who talked about being married five times. And the last guy she ended up marrying was the one who really changed her life. And he's the one who said, get a life because she didn't have one. And that was her biggest issue. She got hobbies, she got friends, and she no longer became that needy partner. And now she's in the best relationship of her life. Mm -hmm. So it is possible, ladies. And yes, how he talks about his mother can be can be vicious. Um, and that can be an indication, but it can also, people have crappy mothers. <laughs> yeah. know, what do you have to um, about that, Bobby? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was going to bring that up too. You know, my husband, uh, my husband, Larry, we've been married um, nine years. Um, and you know, I dated like 30 years. We met online, we met, met on match.com. Um, and he's actually home with a cold right now. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, he's been married twice before. So, and when I met him, I was 48, he was 56. Yes. 57. So, um, he'd been married twice before. Um, and that was, you know, a little bit of a pink flag, right? I mean, to me, that's like, okay, you know, just now I didn't feel the need to learn all about like what happened and, you know, his stories, but I did do the, what did you learn part? And um, his response was very much taking responsibility. It was very much about, you know, I learned that I have to communicate, you know, um, and I learned, you know, it's personal, but it was very clear that um, he's very, he was thoughtful I learned that very early on that he was thoughtful, that he took personal responsibility for his actions and outcomes, which is principle number three of dating work and grown up, by the way. Um, and um, that he could communicate, you know, he could have that conversation. So with anybody, with anything, everyone has a story, especially at this phase in our lives. As we're older, we all have stories about how we got to where we are and making assumptions. Um, I, I just hope that you try not to make assumptions because the guy sitting in front of you isn't the previous guy. He's his own person and he's got his own stories. So, you know, listen, listen to his, his story. Um, like Sandy said, um, maybe that fourth one was the one that smacked him upside the head and <laughs> made him learn. So ask that question. I'd be really interested. And, and what you can do by the way, so you don't look like you're interrogating him is you tell him what something about yourself and then ask him. So you could say, when he says, so tell me about your divorce, right? Because guys do that. It's terrible. You could say, well, I can tell you what I learned from it. And tell him. And then say, how about you? What have you learned from your past relationships? It's a really smart thing to do. It is. Because those that's one of those questions that puts people in the rabbit hole. And uh, mm -hmm. you end up talking about your ex, for example. Instead yeah. of focusing on what Not did sexy. Say. No. Not sexy no. at all. No. So, but, yeah. sorry, go ahead. No, it's it's that whole like bonding on the wounds thing that Bobby, you and I have talked about a lot. Mm -hmm. People tend to bond on the negatives. They tend to bond on, you know, oh my God, you went through that too. Oh God, me too. And what it does is it just, it gets, it, it gets you mired in the muck instead of really bonding on what on on the positives which is what makes you right. want to be a person again because i don't know about you and you probably have been on dates like this ladies who are on the call where you walk away thinking oh this guy's a lot of work um or he's you know he's just shared with me his illness and i feel like i have to be a caretaker now and i don't want that now if he shared that with you on date 10 and you really liked him Mm -hmm. That would be more appropriate because now you have the bandwidth to accept it and to accept all of him. Right. So we have to be careful about what we share and how we share it. That's right. <clears throat> and making and making prejudgments. Yep. And and the thing about the mother, by the way, I, I do hear that a lot. I a lot of women, that's sort of a, a litmus test is if they have a guy has a good relationship with his mother. And I have to tell you, really honestly, and this is like the story thing. Um, my mother was not a good mother. Um, I would, she would, she just wasn't, she's a narcissist and she's a little bit crazy. Um, and she did not mother us. 
So I, I have an older brother who's single, um, who's divorced, he's divorced. I would hate for a woman to judge him based on his relationship with his mother. It would be unfair because he doesn't have a relationship with her and he shouldn't have a relationship with her. So just um, really be open to um, really be aware of your prejudgments. We all have them. I mean, it's human nature, uh, but uh, your litmus test should be how you feel with a guy. I'm going to go back to that like a hundred times, um, how you feel with him and sort of try to, um, and, and the red flag is, oh, I feel like he doesn't care about me. I feel like he's not paying attention to me. I feel like, you know, right. So I feel like he's, he's um, blaming everybody for his problems in his life. Those are the kind of things that would be really, really helpful to you um, in terms of how to, how you're judging. Yeah. But th some of these flags are really important. Um, I hope that we showed you um, ways to like when it's time to bail um, and the things that you can do to kind of pull more out of them to find out if what you're seeing is really what's there. Yeah. And, and um, you know, talk, like you said, talk to guys about things that come up um, because sometimes guys put their foot in their mouth. They don't mean it. Um, they're like not, we do like we do exactly. And you wouldn't <laughs> want to be judged by every single thing that you said. You don't want to walk away from a date thinking, Oh, he didn't call me back. Cause I said that one thing. Wouldn't it be great if he asked you about that one thing that you said that you said by accident? That's so, right. you know, I think we need to give men the same um, treatment that we would want for ourselves, that golden rule. And um, but but those red flags. And I, I want to say one more thing about the mother thing, because um, I, I think it's similar to the ex thing, which is, you know, even if it's a bad relationship or it was a mother who wasn't good what is, how is he, you know, how's he dealt with it? You know, is he stuck in this anger place where he's talking about his mother, just like he talks about his ex? Um, or has he made peace with the fact that his mother's crazy and, um, and that's life. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's the guy that you want to really hang around with. Um, yeah. That's what I'm talking about, Robin. <laughs> yeah. We, Sandy and I talk about mothers a lot. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Our mother's can I say it? Our mothers are like, My mother yeah. watch this. So, <laughs> um, yeah, but we bonded on, on our mothers and some similarities that are most women talk about their mother. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. yeah I mean, normal. most people don't have like this ideal mother situation, you know, yeah. it, it's yeah. how he talks about her like Robin's right. Yes. So I want to, uh, here's something that you may try if you're dating somebody or in a relationship and you're kind of like, you know, wondering about him. Um, I want you to think about what I call your even those. Okay. Your even those are things like, I really, really like him, even though uh, he really doesn't, he doesn't, uh, he's not on ever on time. Or I really like him, even though we've been together four months and he's not talking about a future with me or being exclusive. Or I really like him, even though he treats his children like crap. Okay. You're, even those are probably those red flags that you're trying to avoid because you're into them and you don't want to deal with them. So if you want to sort of um, just help yourself learn what those things might be, things that you may be avoiding, try that, ex that exercise. I really like them even though. Mm. What are your even those? And then look at those and make a decision truly, like honestly with yourself if those are acceptable to you and if since those exist, can you really be happy with this man? I like that. I've called them the if onlys. Mm -hmm. um, so if only he does, yes. yes. That, right? No, but the even those is is really making an excuse. And mm -hmm. we want to stop excusing bad behaviors. And you know, really honor and value yourself, ladies, for the treasure that you are. Because the more you value yourself, the more the right man will value you. you. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And it's having that balance. It's, it's absolutely you, you are first. And I don't mean that in the selfish me, me, me way, because I doubt you'll be like that. But you're ultimately you being happy is what you're looking for and what you're working toward. So you want to always keep that in mind. 
but also again, take responsibility for learning some new things and being able to try to pull the best out of the men you meet. Cause that's going to be good for them. And it's going to be good for you too. And giving them a chance. There's red flags that are run for the roads and there's pink flags that are like, mm, I should pay attention to this and learn a little bit more about that because it, it may be something that that's a deal breaker for me yep. and help him get, get that out. So you can understand each other and see if you're a match. Yeah. So easy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so true though. And Robin says she married an even though, even though mm, I like, I, I'm sorry for that, but I'm, I get it. I married an even though too. And I think yeah. most people who are divorcing or are divorced married somebody whose red flags were there. They saw them, mm -hmm. pushed them under the rug. And what happens when you keep pushing things under the rug is the rug gets really lumpy and you start tripping over those lumps. And when you can't walk anymore, that's when you walk away. So we want you to, you know, walk away before you get those lumpy rugs. And, right. uh, um, you know, so that you can walk smoothly wherever you go with your head held high. And and don't be afraid. I mean, I told a guy goodbye today and uh, no more lumps. Um, I went out on three dates. And on the third date, I saw some red flags that did not work for me. And I very kindly and very directly told him that the connection wasn't there, did not go into a lot of detail. And he said he was disappointed, but he understood and he was very gracious. So don't be afraid to say goodbye as mm -hmm. soon as you see anything that's not working. Because mm -hmm. if you hold on to these red flag guys, you will not make space for the right guys to come through. That's right. <clears throat> they won't, and they're not going to change. Yep. They're not going to change. So, okay. Thank you. I'm so glad you're all here. Thank you so much for hanging with us. And um, this is our first. It's our first blab, right? Um, and next time, I hope uh, that maybe you come join us. And I loved your conversations. Thank you for those, too. Yeah, thank Very you. Cool. And Welcome to Blab. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It is a great platform and it's 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 great that people are talking, um, you know, joining in the conversation. I love that. And um, I also want to say that you're all welcome to join. Um, I have an open group on Facebook. It's a it's a closed group, but it's open to anybody. It's not part of any paid programs that I have. I started it a few weeks ago. We're up to about 200 women. We're having fabulous conversations there. Um, it's called Your Last first date, your last first date. Yes. I'm forgetting what my company is called. <laughs> um, <laughs> your last first date on Facebook. Um, ask to join. I will bring you in and um, join the conversation or go to my website, lastfirstdate.com and you can contact me. And Bobby, you want to give out some contact information? I do. I do. So on Facebook, uh, my page is Date Like a Grown Up. Um, and I do have, uh, I also like Sandy, have a closed group that I'll let you know about um, once you join me there. Um, my website, statelikeagrownup.com, like I said, I would love, I have a monthly free coaching. I do monthly free coaching like this. Um, it's always on a different topic, having to do with dating and relationships and sex and um, getting to know men. So if you go to datelikeagrownup.com slash G-G-N-O for Grown Up Girls Night Out. It's called Grown Up Girls Night Out. It's 100% free. Once a month, we have um, a really, really juicy topic to help you with your dating and find your grown-up love story. And um, I just love to be able to support you. Be great. So datelikeagrownup.com slash ggno. Awesome. Yeah. And Robin says, I'll join you both. Thank you, Robin. Um, so thanks, everybody, for coming on today. And join us next time. Yes, it was really fun. Yeah. And be good to yourself. Yeah. Talk to you soon. Bye.